Hi, and welcome to another edition of Super Sapphire's Lectures with your host, Mr. Sapphire. In today's installment, I will be discussing the Civil War of Reconstruction. More specifically, how was Reconstruction implemented? Now, before we get into how it was implemented, what is Reconstruction? Well, Reconstruction was the process of reuniting the North and the South after the Civil War. And there are two approaches I will be discussing today. One, presidential reconstruction, and two, radical reconstruction. Now, if you've ever seen a cop show or a movie, this scene would look pretty familiar to you. And how I'm going to explain reconstruction is through good cop, bad cop. And here we can see the South being the suspect, and the presidents, who are going to be the good cop, are going to be nice to the South to try to get uh, what they want, which is to unify the country again. And over here, when that doesn't work, we have the radical Republicans who are going to be more aggressive. They're going to be the bad cop and more threatening towards the South to achieve what they, their goals are. Now, first we'll take uh, re uh, presidential reconstruction or the good cop. It was first proposed by Abraham Lincoln and later by Andrew Johnson, and both of who were both presidents, hence the name Presidential Reconstruction. Now, they took the point of view that the Union was unbreakable, and therefore there was no reason to punish the South. They had never truly left. So, their idea was to just kind of be lenient, be nice, put a Band-Aid over the whole uh, breakup, and move on as a united country. Now, let's take a look at Lincoln's plan for a second. Here's Lincoln, here's the South. Uh, his plan was proposed even before the war was over. It was kind of like a plea bargain deal to try to encourage the South to come back and reunite. Now his plan stated that 10% of pre-war voters had to take an oath of allegiance to the Union. After that, they needed to ratify the 13th Amendment which was to abolish slavery. And as we can see here, the radical Republicans are in that viewing room and they're completely left out. So what do they do? They propose the Wade Davis Bill. And what the Wade Davis Bill is set to do is it'll delay Reconstruction until a majority of each state's pre-war voters took an oath of allegiance. The Wade Davis Bill also said anyone who aided the Confederacy, they're not allowed to vote. And lastly, the most important thing the way Davis Bill did was it said African American rights are protected equally under the law by both the state and national governments. Now Lincoln said, uh-uh, this is not going to happen. Too harsh. I'm going to take out my pocket veto. going to slam it down. That's not going to happen. But Lincoln also says to the radical Republicans, I see where you're going with this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in the Freedmen's Bureau into my plan, which is a government agency that was set up to help aid in tr the transition of newly freed slaves uh, by giving them an education and giving them some health care. Shortly after, Lincoln is assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, the Ford Theater, and in comes Andrew Johnson as the next president. Democrat from Tennessee. Now, originally, Lincoln nominated Johnson as VP to show solidarity between the North and the South, but now we have a, a Southerner as the next president. So what is he going to do? He's going to follow in the same image as Lincoln by showing leniency towards the South. He's even going to be more lenient. That 10% requirement that Lincoln had? Gone. He's going to pardon almost all Southerners except for those high-ranking officials. He didn't really like those guys. So, no more 10% policy, although you could still swear an oath of allegiance, and there will be some incentives for you to do that, but it wasn't required. So, in a perfect world, the South would now come back to the Union, slavery would be abolished, and peace would prevail throughout the country. But this isn't a perfect world. 
and that band-aid that Johnson and Lincoln slapped on the wound called Reconstruction, well, that's not going to be strong enough. And what's going to happen is southern governments are going to take advantage of presidential leniency, and they're going to enact black codes, which were laws that limited African American rights. African Americans here could not vote, they couldn't serve on a jury, they couldn't um, testify in court against white people, they couldn't marry white people, they couldn't even stand on a street corner without being arrested. So who's going to protect African American rights? Well, from that viewing room, in comes the radical Republicans. They break down the door. They break it open. And what they're going to do is they're going to be punishing the South. They're going to want revenge against the South for uh, seceding. They're going to want to protect African Americans. And they're going to want to try to increase the power of the Republican Party. It, now we can view them as the bad cop in this situation, at least the bad cop towards the Southerners. Now what they do is they enact the 13th Amendment, which was to abolish slavery. They enact the 15th Amendment, which was to give African American males the right to vote. Don't worry, I'm not forgetting about the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment they enact will give African American citizenship. But if we look all the way back to the Wade Davis bill, it also includes banning any Confederate officers from ever taking part in state and national government again. It also includes equality under the law for African Americans. So now, on state and national government, African Americans had equal rights. Now, how to protect these rights? The Radical Republicans, they're also going to divide the South into five military districts. And these five, so they're going to send the troops back and say, protect African American rights. And for a while, under this, African Americans start flourishing a little bit. Also, I'm forgetting, how did the Radical Republicans enact all this stuff? Well, with Congre with Southern congressmen out of office, they had a m enough majority to override Andrew Johnson's veto power. So they pushed all these things through, and Andrew Johnson was powerless against them. He could not stop them at all. African Americans were flourishing for a little while. They started to get on their feet and make something of themselves. But then comes the election of 1876, which pinned uh, Republican Rutherford B. Hayes against Democrat Samuel Tilden. And this was a deadlock between the two, and a compromise needed to be struck. So what the Democrats did, they were really cunning in this aspect. They said to the Republicans, we know you want the power of the presidency. We'll let you have the presidency, but you have to do something for us. And that something was to take the military and the troops out of the South. Now the Republicans agreed on this with the Compromise of 1877. And with that compromise came the, fall, the end of Reconstruction and also the beginning of terrorist organizations such as the KKK to rise up and limit, once again limit, the rights of African Americans. And we'll continue on this with my next lecture. See you next time.